Welcome. Let me do something a little strange. Imagine a hundred people about to walk down a garden path. Here's the path. And at some point, the path splits into two. If you go to the left, you'll end up following a path to house A. If you go to the right, you end up following a house to ha follow the path to house B. And let's assume people, you know, just flip a coin or just uh, randomly choose left or right. So if 100 people go down, we expect on average about 50 people to go to house A, 50 people to go to house, house B. What I want to do in this video is take a, make a pictorial representation of what happens. So here's 100 people. I'll do a 10 by 10 array of dots. So each dot represents 100 people. Well, not really. I'm not being very careful. But there's 100 people as dots. And basically what I'm saying is that 50 of them you would expect to end up in house A and 50 of them to end up house B. So actually rather than drawing dots, what I'm going to do is just draw the square that represents all the people and say here's a diagram representing the results of this particular path walking puzzle. 50% to the left and 50% to the right. Now I want to play this game with some complicated path structures. And we'll start off gently and we'll move our way up. So let's see. How about this path structure? What if I did something like this? Um, as we walk down, people come to a three-way split. Let's assume they're equally likely to choose a split. If they go down to the left path, they split again. They either end up going in house A or house B. If the folks in the middle path, they end up going straight towards house B. And folks on the third path actually go through another three-way split where they could end up in either house C or B, or maybe there's some tunnels and stuff. What I mean by this is they don't cross paths back in house A. So if people walk down this path, my question is, what proportion of people end up in house A? What proportion in B? What proportion in house C? Well, let's do this sort of square model representation of this and see what happens. Let's do it very carefully. So here's all the people represent a great big block of people. At the first split, a third of the people will go to the left, a third of the people will go to the straight, and a third of the people will go to the right. Oh, sorry, I keep, why does this line keep going off? Well, let's first of all actually look at these middle people. All those that go on the middle path end up straight in house B, so I know that that third of the picture is all going to be house B people. What happens to the people on the left? Well, they come along and they split in two, so this portion of people here on the left split into two. Half of them end up in A, and then half of them end up in B. And of the people on the right, they actually then split to three with one-third of those people going to A, one-third of them going to B, one-third of them going to C. So now it's just a question of matching up areas. So the number of people that end up in house A would be one-third, it was sort of one-half of one-third of the, of the square, so that's one-sixth, plus uh, one-third of one-third, one-ninth. That, I believe, is five-eighteenths. People that end up in part B is one-half of a third, a six, plus a full third, whoops, plus a third of a third, which I believe is um, 11 eighteenths. And I guess part C then has to be 2 eighteenths, 1 ninth. Actually, you can see it is 1 ninth. It is 1 ninth, which is 2 eighteenths. So there it is. There's the proportions of people that end up in each house. The square model is actually very handy. Uh, you can actually have lots of fun with this. Uh, maybe I'll leave this one as a puzzle. Let me draw a very complicated picture. Da -da 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 -da. And Let's have it be something like this. Let's just let's make it juicy. Let's have a path that comes down, and then people split into three, just like before. And of the people that go to the left, they split into two. They either end up in house A or B. I'll make that for them. For the people that go in the middle, let them split into three. Maybe they go into house A or house C or house D. Let's put a fourth house in. And the people that then go to the right, let's have them split into three. A third of those people will go to D. Um, a third of those will go to B. And another third will come down another path that then splits again into C and D. All right, so maybe here's my question. Let's see. Uh, it looks like D has the most paths going into it. Does that mean that most people end up in house D? So there's my question. In fact, I, the real question is, can you give me the proportion of people that end up in each house? So I'll leave that as a puzzle. Uh, the reason I, I'm doing this is that when I teach basic probability theory, it's actually very handy to use this to explain why the word and is often interpreted as times in probability theory. 
And let me make this a little more like a probability question. So let me clear my picture. So hopefully you've got that. If not, pause this and then play with it. Copy it down. Because it's about to disappear. Goodbye. Farewell. There it's gone. All right, so let's make this a probability type question. Um, I need my pen back. Suppose that I uh, toss a coin and it could either be heads or tails. So my first action is tossing a coin. My second action is to roll, this is to toss a coin again, either be head or tails. And my third action is then to roll a die, which I'll either get a one, two, three, four, five, or six. And I'm going to ask, what's the probability of doing these three actions, of getting a head, a head, and then a five or a six? Well, I'm going to use my house model to answer that question. So first of all, imagine this is a path. Here comes a group of people, and my first action is going to be the flip of a coin. I'm going to have the head people, and I'm going to have the tail people. Now if I get a tail on the first to toss, I'm going to send them straight to the don't want house. There it is, don't want that. But the people that get heads, they're about to go through a second action of getting a heads or tails. Heads or tails. Those that get tails on that toss go straight to my don't want house. And the people that survived so far, going, going on the left paths, will then split into six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And uh, I'm going to be clever and just actually number them this way. One, two, three, four, five, six. So if anyone gets a one, goes to my don't want house. Anyone that gets a two to my don't want house. Three is don't want. Four is don't want. But those that get five and six go into my happy want house. So there is a path representation of this probability problem. What are the chances of me getting heads, heads, and then five or six, um, it's simply going to be what my model, square model tells me. So let me draw the square model to go with this path. I'll do it in green. So what happened here is I see that, first of all, people split into half and half. I get half of them go into the happy place and half of them go into don't want. Of those that go half, they split again. So this was the tails on the first toss. Those. Uh, either split into don't want or want. These are those that got heads and then got tails. And these are the people that got heads and heads. And those that are in the heads heads place now split into six. That's going to be a complicated picture. One, two, three, four, five, six. And it's really only the five and the six people I want. Everyone else is don't want. So actually, I can see from this picture the probability is the proportion of people that end up in my happy house, which is two sixths of uh, one half of one half of the picture. So getting a heads and a heads and a five or a six really explains why I want multiplication going on. Actually, it also explains the or, a five or a six. I want to add this piece plus this piece. So and I'm not really going into the probability theory here, but it does explain why in very basic problems, often the word or, I want one option or another, corresponds to adding areas and and corresponds to doing fractions of fractions of areas, hence times. All right, that's fine. That's what I do with basic courses. But of course, let me put a twist on all this. Let's do something really funky and fun. Let's look at a really interesting path picture. Da -da 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 -da. Suppose I have a group of people coming down a path. Whoops, I need my pen. And they've got three options. They can split right away and either go straight to house A or they can go straight to house B, or they can keep going straight forward. Those that go forward, they have another three-way split. Either they go to house A, or they go to house B, or they keep going forward. Of those people that keep going forward, they have another three-way split. They either go to A, or go to B, or keep going forward. In fact, I'm going to do this a lot of times. In fact, imagine I have an infinitely big diagram that's always doing this. What's happening? What's the picture that goes with this infinite path walking diagram? I guess you could argue, since everything's symmetrical, half the people are going to end up in A and half the people are going to eventually end up in B because the proportion of people keep going on forever is like going down to zero. But let me draw the picture that goes with this. It's kind of fun. So here's the beginning square. Right off the bat, a third of them walk to A, a third of them walk to B, and the middle third keep going. All right, of those that walked to, kept, kept going, a third of those then walked to A, and a third of those walked to B, and the middle third kept going. Of those, a third of them walked to A, walked to B, and then keep going. A third of those walked to A, B, keep going, and so on. In fact, I'm going to keep doing this, and if I color it in, 
Let's, let's do it in a different color. Here's all the A people. Here's more A people. Here's more A people. More A people. A, A, A. And then there's B people. I don't know if you can see it. Maybe my coloring needs to be deep, but it looks like I'm getting two spirals. Ooh, that's pretty. Two spirals of people that eventually look like the amount of space in the middle is diminishing to zero that fills in the whole square. So it looks like I've just come up with a pictorial proof, if you like, that one third, the first part of the green, plus a third of a third, that's the next part of the green, plus a third of a third of a third, the next part of the green over here, plus a third of a third of a third of a third, and so on, if I did that forever, is actually turning out to be exactly half the area, if I could indeed do it forever. So there's a nice little calculus type result. Here's an infinite process that I can see must have a finite answer in the end, being half the square. What fun. So I'm wondering if you can come up with a picture then, a path walking puzzle that deals with this sum, 1 fourth plus 1 fourth squared plus 1 fourth cubed plus 1 fourth uh, to the fourth and so on. What does that equal and what picture goes with it to prove it? Thanks very much.